Hi there, welcome to this build of a 65 inch wingspan Great Plains Trainer 60. Now we're getting to a real pivotal moment with the build here. In this video we're actually going to be fitting the wings to the fuselage. We're going to be making sure that the wing saddles fit nicely onto the underside of the wings. In the previous video we finished this underside more or less completely except for this central hatch. Got this fiberglass, I've given it a good sand, it's all ready to go. But we need to get these saddles just the right shape so they marry against the bottom of that wing nicely. And we also need to attach, fit in the cross former here at the front of the fuselage to lock those wings into place. Now, if we have a look at the underside of the wing there, you can see that is not a bad fit. It obviously needs a little bit of sanding to make it fit just right. And there's quite a lot of balsa, I was quite generous when I cut these sides around the front and around the windscreen. Just so that we've got a lot to play with and that is going to need trimming down, altering, but we'll do that once we've got the wings fitted. Now as part of fitting those wings, we need to make sure that we get the incidence of the wing in relation to the fuselage just right. And if we have a look on the plans behind me, these are a great set of plans from Outer Zone. The incidence is set at 1 32nd uh, positive angle of incidence, so they're just lifted up in relation to the central datum line of the fuselage by 1 32nd, which is minuscule really, just needs to be very slightly positive. And the datum line that we're going to be using for that, to measure that from, is this flat uh, surface on the tail of the fuselage, which is parallel to the tail plane. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up on the bench and I'll show you how I'm going to get not only the saddles right, but get the wings with that correct angle of incidence. Right, well I've set the fuselage up on my bench in a very specific way to make sure that it is level with the table. Now my building table is absolutely spot on and I knew it was but again I check it before I start setting this up because we're going to be taking the measurements to get the incidence right and the wings level directly from the building table to the wing. Now, the, what we're going to use as our reference line on this fuselage is this top surface here, which is parallel to an imaginary zero datum line that goes down the centre of the fuselage. And this is parallel to that line. And also, we've got a slot at the end here, I'll put this piece of wood in just to demonstrate where the tailplane is going to go, and that again is absolutely parallel to the datum line. So this is our zero reference line. And the wings, the incidence of the wings, are going to be positive by 1 32nd of an inch, tilted up at the front, and that will be in relation to this rear fuselage datum line. Now, what I've done is I've made sure, as I've said, the, few, the, the building board is level, so I'm making sure that this rear fuselage is absolutely level, spot on, which it is. Really good quality level, so I trust it and I've tested it against other levels. Now, it's absolutely square that way as well. So now I know my fuselage is spot on and perfectly parallel square to the building board. To get it right, I put it on these blocks of wood and then just shimmed it with bits of paper, just putting an extra bit of paper under just to get it absolutely spot on. Now the reason I've put it on the timber to lift the fuselage up off the building board is because I want this cross former here to be able to slide down. At the moment it's too long for the fuselage 
and will need to be trimmed a little bit but I want to be able to measure that up with the wings in place and hence sticking below the, the level of the fuselage so I've lifted it up. I've got a shed load of weight on here to hold this in place and I've got some in the fuselage because the last thing I want is this moving around. It's really nice and solid. I put a T-pin where, where the back of the wings will come at the very centre and I know that if I line the rear joint of the wing up with this T-pin then the wings will be on square and I know that because I've had the wings on and you'll see there's a T-pin down at the bottom I've got this nylon cord which doesn't stretch it's really good builders line and I've used that with the wings in place to measure out to the wing tips like that and just to make sure that both those distances are, are the same so the wing is on the fuselage square. Now, so we've got the fuselage set up, let's move on to the wings. <clears throat> now the wings, I've just moved this a little bit. I put in four pins in the wings. I put on pencil lines here at the edge of the fuselage, it's the inner edge of the fuselage, and then 11 mil out from the outer edge of the fuselage on either side, I put a pin centrally on that leading edge, both sides. And correspondingly, I've done exactly the same on the trailing edge of the wing, centre of the wing and that's 11 millimetres out from the, uh, the, the outside edge of the fuselage. So these pins are on the central line of the wing and they are exactly the same distance apart um, front and back and that's really important because we've got the dihedral if one of the pins was here and one of the pins was here and we're measuring to see if the wing is dead level or lifted up obviously we would get a false reading because this is bound to be higher because of the uh, further out because of the dihedral hope that made sense so now I've got those four pins and I can sit the fuselage on I can plug it into that cross former at the front now I tell you what I'm going to move the camera around and show you what I'm doing here so you can see this side better. Right, well now, now you can see from the front view we've got the wing sat on, I've got the um, the dowels plugged into this former here at the front. Now if I take that out, as I said, that wing former, or sorry, that fuselage former, cross former, will go up and down. And we can use that when we've finished shaping these wing saddles to make sure that it's pulled down tight enough to get a nice tight fit for the wing. So if we put the wing back on and push that down nice and snug. Now we can see the two pins at the front 11 millimeters out from the fuselage on the direct central line through the wing ribs, through the, through the wing and meeting up with similarly two pins at the back here again 11 mil out from the fuselage and directly in the center of the wing so we've got that central line now if we measure the uh, at the pin there and we measure at the pin at the back and we always measure the pin close in to where it's coming out of the balsa not here just in case it's sagging or we haven't put it in straight so if we measure the pin there and we measure the pin here and we get the same measurement we know that the wing the central line of that wing is parallel to our datum line our rear section of the fuselage our imaginary data line, datum line going through the fuselage which we know is parallel to the table so what we need to do is we need to have this front pin one thirty second higher which is minute higher than the pin at the back and we also need to at the same time ensure that that pin is the same height as that pin and so our wings 
are square onto the fuselage, not cocked over one way or another. Now, the first job that I'm going to do here is where the wing presses up against the front of the fuselage. If I push that wing as far as I can to the front so it presses on the, um, the fuselage here and here, it's crooked. You can see hopefully the pin has gone off on the back and it's cocked the wing over. I mean you can see it's crooked just by eye. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand off maybe trim off with a scalpel some of this oops just get these pins out there we go trim off some of this or sand off some of this to make sure that the wings sit squarely against this uh, this fuselage here and Yeah, still needs a little bit more off, which I'll do in a second. Now the second job we need to do is then to get these saddles right. If we put a spirit level on there, we can see that that, that side of the fuselage here is probably about a couple of mil, sixteenth of an inch, something like that, maybe not quite that much, higher. So this is higher, this is the lower side. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand the lower side to fit the underside of the wing. So the wing will sit on here, pressed up against those edges at the front, and lovely and profiled the same. Uh, uh, so the wing sits lovely on there with no gaps. And I'm going to be using my round, round sanding sticks. I find them really good for this kind of work. And if you want to see how these are made, I make these myself, have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to, to, to how I make these. Once I've got this side done, I can then, I'm going to put some tape on there, masking tape, so that I can't sand that any further. Once I'm happy, that is a perfect profile, just what we want. I'm going to put masking tape on it and do this side. But I need to be mindful when doing this of the incidents to get that side of the wing, the front of the wing, just slightly lifted up. So I, I'm going to get on now and I'm going to sand these front edges to get that wing sitting on there square and the T-pin lined up with the centre of the wing at the back and then I'm going to get that profiled and then we'll come back and see how we're getting on. Well I now have the wing sitting on this saddle a pretty good fit and I probably have the correct incidence now with this being just very slightly higher, about just under a millimetre, one thirty second, so just slightly higher on the front than the back. But as you can probably see, the wing is well cocked over, and if I put a spirit level on there, I don't know whether the bubble shows up, but that is about horizontal. So we actually need the uh, the wing saddle on this side to come down by God, almost a quarter of an inch something like that so quite a bit now what I'm going to do is I will take the wing off and this saddle that we've got right I'm going to put on some tape some masking tape fairly heavy duty so that I can sand this side get it the same profile as this but without removing anything off this surface. I will then need to come back and work on both sides very gently to get this perfectly square to the building board and also to get the incidence just right. So there's still quite a lot of work to do yet in bringing this down and balancing everything up. I've got the tape on here to protect that side which I've got fairly close and now I'm sanding this other side. And I'm using this level just on top of my sanding stick just as a really, really rough guide. It still comes down to the pins in the end, but if I move this along, you can see, hopefully, I, I don't know whether you can see the bubble, hopefully you can, you can see that's way off at the front, but here, it's not too bad. There, it's more or less right. 
so just need to take more of this off until we're close and of course I can check it like that as well which is more or less what I'm getting when I'm holding it on the sanding stick Right, well I now have these both sides within oh, half a mil of each other, very very close and more or less the same <coughs> excuse me, at the front and at the front and the back. So what I'm going to do is now take this protective tape off. You can see it's uh, hardly touched the tape, the sandpaper, it's, it's a great, uh, great protection. And now what I'm going to do is put the wings on and measure it as accurately as I can front and back lined up and see exactly where we are now that's 182 and a half millimeters and that is a hundred and just just slightly a quarter of a mil more it's it, it's almost uh, unmeasurable very slightly more so I just need to measure the back now and then make sure that this is higher at the front by that one thirty second or what is that, that's about 0.8 of a mil. So it just needs to be very slightly positive. So I'm going to get on and get this finished now so that we've got this saddle nice. And when we measure that we need, what I do is I've got a weight here which I just put on the back just to make sure that it's held down tight because don't forget we don't want it springing up because eventually it will be held down by some bolts nice and tight front and back. Right we've got to a place now where I'm pretty happy we've got these wing saddles on the fuselage sanded to the right shape so they're a really good fit to the underside of the wing and just as importantly we have a slight positive angle of incidence so the wing is just slightly tilted up at the front and down at the back and we've used the pins to measure and that's giving me uh, about 1 32nd just under a, a millimeter rise on this front end which is just right and it, it's worth taking time to get this right because this could be the difference between a good flying plane and another plane now it's a fiddly job it takes time but it's not difficult you just have to keep on it just sanding a little bit measuring a little bit but when you get there it's a really good feeling to think you've got it just right i've got the weight on the back here to simulate the wing bolts pulling it down and i've looked underneath and checked that there's no give when i press on that so i'm satisfied that that is in the final position even though we don't have the bolts in place. The front, I put the former in and plug the dowels into that and I push that down, pulled it down really tight and um, tightened up this clamp to hold it in place. So now there is no, there is no give in the front of that fuselage. We have it plugged in and we have it plugged in nice and tight. Now, if I take off these weights off the back, we can take the wing out. When I put these dowels, just before I put these dowels in properly, because they're not glued in yet, I'm going to taper just the front very slightly so they plug in easier. But we've now got that cross former just where we want it. And the wings, as I said, uh, sorry, the wing dowels, as I said, plug in nice and tight. If I hold the back down, simulate the bolts, there's no give in that at all. Just how we want it. But what we need to do before I set about epoxying that in place is I've marked the underside of that former and I need to just cut off the bottom because this, as I've said many times, is too long because I didn't know where about this was going to go. So the next job is to check it again, <laughs> as I always do, and then I'm going to cut this off and epoxy this into place. What I'll probably do is put thin CA on this and just let that soak in. I might just check the sides first just to check there's no 
uh, bits of loose balsa, but then CA that just to make that nice and hard. And then this is not going to be touched at all again. And, uh, and there we have it. We have our wing ready to be fitted. So I'm going to glue that in place now. Well, we've now got the wings sitting snugly on top of the fuselage with that incidence just right, giving us one thirty second positive angle of incidence. So the front of the wings are just tilted up very slightly. And we've got this cross former epoxied in place that gives us a really firm fixing on the front there, just what we want. We've still got a lot to do to the fuselage with the wing screen and getting that covered in there. And as I said earlier, I was quite generous on the balsa here to allow me to work on that and get it just right. And as on the back here, the fixing points and the rear windscreen. But that's gonna be the focus of the next video. Oh, just one point I will add at this stage is that this crossformer, just before I epoxied it into place, I put about a 45 degree angle on that crossformer. So I put an angle like that. And that will help when I come to do the windscreen. So, I'll draw this video to a close now. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it useful, and please come back and see how we get on in finishing these windscreens and getting the wing finished with that sheeting and the dowels glued in. Okay, well thanks very much for watching.